Hey, hey, good morning, everybody. It looks like we are live and we're gonna, oh, look at this. Our connection is so much better than it was on Friday. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Roland. Hello, hello. Thank you guys for coming back. We're doing it much better on a Monday. This is way better. We're a little bit late, y'all. Sorry about that, but we are here and uh, we're so happy to be here. So for my replay viewers, I want to say good morning and thank you for being uh, here with me, with us, should I say. And uh, for all the you guys that are here live, welcome. We're going to kind of go back and repeat what we were doing last week. Um, had Reese and Roland on. And we were talking about, um, oh, let me just say, for those who haven't been on with me before, um, again, I'm Sensei Sabira, and I come on every day, Monday through Friday, about 8.30, a little bit late today because we, we got this technical stuff going on. But, um, and I'm, I'm talking to spiritual entrepreneurs, supporting them in telling their story in the marketplace in a way that makes it super easy for people to find you so that you can serve them, so that you can actually start living the life you want to be living, uh, generating income in a way that's just natural to you. And um, that's in alignment actually with why you came to the planet. Isn't that awesome? Sounds really big, I know, but that's, that's what I do and that's what I'm here for. So today I have my student. Laricia Lake Myers and her husband, Roland Myers. And the reason I decided to bring them on today, hey, Dee Dee, nice to see you. Good morning, Nina. Um, is because, guys, I want to talk about the plight of teachers, right? What's really important here is um, the fact that Roland and Reese are retired teachers, guys. So I wanted you guys to hear the story from people who have been in the trenches um, as you know, professional educators. But not only that, this was a married, this is a married couple, been married for 31 years, both retired teachers. And I want to talk about why they retired, what brought you guys to retirement, what your life was kind of before. I don't think people, unless you are a teacher, or you, you live with a teacher or have you know, a teacher close to you, you don't really know the inside of what, how teachers today are making it or not making it financially. And I think your story is just so critical for people to hear. So if you guys would, if you would start, hey, Tiffany, uh, just introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you know, your background and um, and then let's get into into how you started, Reese, um, with online marketing and why why that has been so important for you. So, who are you? And why are you here? That good stuff. Let's start there. All right. Well, I'll just go ahead and do a little intro, and then I'll let Roland tell his story. Because a little bit, a little bit for us, though. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. There you go. That was good. Whatever you just did was perfect. Okay, I got a little closer. I wanted to turn the volume up here a little bit. Maybe that'll help. All right. So I'm Clarissa Myers, Clarissa Lake Myers. I grew up in the. I was born and raised in the Virgin Islands, and then I went away to college, um, uh, Andrews University in Berrien Springs. Anyway, uh, I, my first teaching assignment was in Boston, Massachusetts. That's where I met Roland, and um, after we got married, like. Four years later, um, we moved to Portsmouth, and it, he was still. He went back to school um, to get his degree. Mm -hmm. And while how, he was, how long did you guys? How long did you guys teach? At that time, I okay. He hadn't started his teaching career mm -hmm. yet. I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started in eighty two. Mm -hmm. After we got married, we got married in eighty seven. So I've been mm -hmm. teaching for a little while. Okay. Before I was working, and he had done aeronautical technology in Boston, gotten a, a degree there, but during that time, the economy was, you know, was really depressed. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. he couldn't find a job. So he went back, he thought I was having a whole lot of fun. It looked like mm -hmm. I was enjoying my, myself teaching because I really was. And so he went to back to school and got his degree. But in the process, we had three daughters. And so it was challenging, you know, trying to, uh, to take care of a family. He was in school, mm -hmm. he was time, you know, security. 
and um, the church school, you know, Christian education was important to us. So a little before the Christian education, childcare was expensive. We had three little ones. Mm-hmm. And it, it seemed like I was just working for, to pay for childcare. And I was right. so tempted to like, maybe just take a leave of absence and stay home with the kids, you know, to raise them. Mm-hmm. He was still in school and it, it, the income just wasn't going to be there. Mm-hmm. So I pre- pressed on until when he finished, um, things got a little easier, but again, the children were now school-aged and we mm-hmm. wanted them in an environment that would reinforce what we were teaching at home. So Reese, tell me this, tell me what it was like as a teacher. Tell me what you guys' life was like, you know, financially, that's what we came here to talk about today. Uh, we've seen a lot on the Time Magazine, mm-hmm that just came out the covers about how teachers struggle financially. So we can get right to that. Like, what was it like really being a teacher in the classroom? Well, you know, it, it was it was challenging because okay. students had needs. And, you know, you would think, you, know, you make a list. These are the things that the children will need for the, for the school year. Uh, and some parents would send the items that the children needed, but the majority didn't. And so in order to get certain things done, we would have to go into our pockets to mm-hmm. fund. So you're not only sending your kids to school, paying for your children's supply, your three daughters, but now you're supplementing the classroom for what your students, and you guys probably had, what, 20 or more um, classrooms? 25 to 30. Between okay. 25 and 30 so you're making sure that your three daughters have what they need in uh, in school, plus, let's say 25, so maybe 30 kids in total that you're actually really supporting financially in terms of uh, school supplies. Uh, yes, yeah, so, and, uh, you know, our, our, the school system, you know, the principal, they would provide some things, but once mm-hmm. that's gone, then that's it. You know, the school year is 180 days long, and some parents would only supply maybe for the first semester, you know, and that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, have so many other days to go and okay I'll let you <laughs> let me put a dollar figure to that when yeah give us give us the dollar figure rolling break it down when she first started working she was making six hundred fifty dollars every two weeks yeah what six hundred fifty dollars yeah every two weeks that was wow exciting. and we used to get excited about payday eve because yeah, the day before payday yeah, that, that was that was like Christmas to us because we were looking forward to this payday. Yeah. You know, the, the problem is, uh, and what I like about being an entrepreneur, you know, you have a chance to expand your income. When you lock in to a job such as this, a career, or at least on the education level, um, there's really no room for expansion. It's not right. like it's an expansion. And you you were saying, Roland, that you you did make an attempt to expand as a teacher by getting a part time job. So if I remember correctly, what we were talking about last Friday, you had a and, and I want you to talk because this was so powerful to me that this is what teachers are living through here. Um, you had two jobs. You were a teacher full time. And then you had a full-time security gig. Yeah. So you were telling us about that, Roland. Can you tell us more about that so we can be reminded? Because that, that just really blew my mind. Well, basically, I was working around the clock, only with a couple of hours of sleep. Um, I would get off my day job as a teacher. Mm-hmm. If I'm fast enough, I can get home, maybe rest for about an hour. And if you're I'll fast go- enough, you can rest for about an hour. Yeah, if I, that is, if I don't uh, linger around the school trying to, you know, tidy up things, uh, which a good teacher would do, uh, you know, I'll try to get home, you know, and get that rest, shower and rest, and then for about an hour if I'm lucky. But you really don't sleep because, you know, you're afraid. Well, you only have an hour. Yeah. But I, I'm I'm afraid to fully let go and sleep because if I do, I may oversleep. Mm-hmm. I know I'm not going anywhere then. So 
let me let me tell people who are here. So good morning, love, Joy, Joy Love and Amos, Rolita Yan. We got a lot of people on this morning. We got, uh, oh, Harry's here. Good morning. Lori Yori. Hey, good morning. Sippo and Queen Nancy Aisha, who's also, there's a lot of teachers on here today for my community. Um, so you guys do me a favor, share this out. I think this, this conversation is so important. Even if you are not a teacher, we all know teachers and probably we don't know what they're living through. The purpose of today's conversation isn't necessarily about, and it is about what you went through, what you struggled through as a teacher, but I want to, you know, wrap this, connect this to what you're doing now as online marketers and why you decided, but I think it's important to set the stage, like for people to understand what your life was actually like as a teacher. And and then why you decided to come online to, to make a difference in your life financially. So go ahead and pick that up. Thank you guys for sharing the, the uh, engagement. I'm seeing the likes and loves. Thank you guys for that so much. Yeah, um, well then I'll be off to my evening job. Mm. And uh, I had to be there, uh, it was like six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Either six or seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. I get off the next morning at seven o'clock and I had to be to school no later than 8.30. Wow. It would take me about 30 minutes to get home. So, so you uh, were literally living on like two hours of sleep? Yeah, I, and I was basically going through the day on adrenaline. But um, doing Whoa. My, yeah, during my planning time, um, I, I would take the children to resources like library or music or something like that. Then I'll go in my room and I'll, lock the door so I not to be disturbed, cut off the lights and I can get about 20 minutes worth of sleep. And that would be enough to carry me through the rest of the day. Yeah, looking back at it. You would do this for a, a whole week? Yeah. And uh, Oh my gosh. And is this common for teachers? Well, I, 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 um, I can just tell you, I had a coworker. She was, um, she was working at a factory. You know, she would get off and she would work at a factory. The only difference with her is um, she managed to get in a little more sleep than I did. And she'd get off like three or four o'clock in the morning. So that allowed her to get home and get rested and, and get ready for the day. But I mean, you, you got to because by the time they get finished taking out this out of your check and that out of your check, and um, you know, you're not left with a whole lot. And you wow. Know, oh, wow. Yeah. How Effect because Risa, you were telling me of about how all these years later the impact uh, physically, the impact physically that this made on Roland because Roland, you had to how you had to eat while you were doing this two job, two hours of sleep night type of thing. How did this impact your? Physical health. Thank well, you, was, Sharon. I'm seeing all the shares happen. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was uh, it was devastating. Of course, if you're a security officer, you're not any good if you sleep. So, uh, I mean, I would eat to stay awake. I wasn't necessarily hungry. And mm -hmm. the building that I was in, you know, I couldn't really leave. And all they had were these snack machines. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get stuff like cupcakes and candy bars and maybe coffee or something like that. Throw it up. Yeah, a lot of empty sugar calories. and adrenaline. I mean, sugar and uh, caffeine. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, looking back at it, that it wasn't really the smart thing to do. Uh, if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't, and I, and I definitely would do something different. But uh, I mean, that's how I would stay away. You know. So what happened because he was living this lifestyle, little sleep, um, eating, making unhealthy choices in his. Uh, diet. Yeah, because he really didn't have time. Yeah, he, he um, developed, developed diabetes, you know, ah. developed diabetes ah. and, and, and one thing led to the next. And so um, in 2016, we were about to move from one location to another and it was hot. It was the last day of school and he was out there working in the heat, he was sweating and I could tell something was wrong, but 
we 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 were in a crunch and we had been up all weekend packing because we only had a weekend to move from one place to another. And uh, when we left, he was driving, we were driving to to a hotel because the, the place we were moving to wasn't going to be ready for another week. Yes. And um, he was swearing all over the road. I said, Roland, you know, this is no time to play. Stop playing. It's not funny. But he wasn't playing. He wasn't a, having a stroke. He was having a stroke. Wait a minute. Hold on. He was having a stroke while driving. Yes, he was having the stroke. And I, I, I said, you know, stop doing that. If you don't stop, I'm going to take over. You guys, please, I hope you please are sharing this out. This is, there's a question on here for you guys. How many years, how long did you hold down two jobs, Roland, is the question. Um. Well, it was, it was over a year. Uh, over a year to do that. So yeah, the impact on your, not only your psychology, but your physiology. Wow. And he had that, he was having the stroke and I didn't know he was having a stroke until, you know, I said, no, stop the car, let me drive. And we were on the highway and the cars were, you know, honking at us and, you know, right, right, right. playing. But when, okay. we, when we stopped the car and then I took over, you know, when we got out, his face was twisted, you know, and that's when I knew wow. that this was not something light, you know, to be taken lightly. So that was the first stroke. Um, there was one stroke. There was, he had a second, um, but not right away. So that was the last day of the school year in 2016. So he had the summer to kind of recuperate. He didn't seem to have any negative lasting effects. His mm -hmm. face straightened back out. And so we weren't sure should he attempt going through another school year or, or not. So he started the school year. But as you know, teachers work really hard. The, the, the demands that have been placed on us are uh, just continue, continue to mount. Nothing yeah. is being taken off the plate, but it's just packed high, you know. And the question is, what else can you do? That, that's their whole mentality. What else can you do? Mm. Um, mm. I'm kind of so they kept adding and adding and adding. Subsequently, you had a second stroke. Yeah. And, and finally, at that point, that was when you guys said, okay, enough is enough. And Roland, you retired first, correct? I uh, know he oh. was under evaluation. They had to determine mm -hmm. if he was eligible for disability or whatever and to see, you know, his cognitive testing and, you know, to see what effects it had on his brain with memory. And, you know, there were things that he really couldn't remember to do. And right, so right. I took family medical leave to be able to assist him in, in recuperating, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, in the classroom, you can't be making errors and spelling and, right. you know, and remembering to do certain things. With, Yes. So, Reese, tell me this. So, let me just kind of fast forward a little bit, just for for sake of time, really quickly. So, I know that what ended up happening was that you both ended up retiring. You retired to be able to be able to care for your husband. Yeah. And then you guys decided to come online. Yeah. You guys yeah. decided to come online. And how has that been for you? Just briefly. We only have just a few more minutes left. How how has being online impacted your life? It's it's so much better now. We we don't have to be on this this treadmill of racing trying to get this 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 the everything in because I was being I was stressed out you know yes I, I was it yeah you process off all of that I I lost my mom and, and mm. that had a huge effect on me because I was looking mm. at possibly losing him too because his memory oh, who gosh. I was. He didn't know where he was. So the stroke had left some effects, you know, on him. And so um, I, I, I thought, especially when I went back to work after um, family medical leave, after my 12 weeks and going back, the, the first thing that was said to me by my administrator was, oh, I need you to give me two dates. I need to come in and do an observation. And I was already having anxiety and depression. And so that was like, oh my gosh, not even, hello, welcome back. You know, we missed you. Those are the things that I thought a normal person would say, mm. especially after losing my mom. Okay. And, and so it's like, okay, you know what? That means I could fall down and, 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 and pass away. 
you know, and it'll be business as usual tomorrow. So, so that was a, that that's an important piece that what you just said what you realized that was for your job. Yes. Can you hear us? Well, just in case you can hear us, uh, Severe, you're frozen. I think the computer's trying to download now. Correct this up. Are we still alive? We're frozen. Oh, we, we okay. We're gone. Oh, we are we live. It says live. I don't know. Yeah, what I was going to say was the uh, thing about being online is it, it allows I, us. I don't think it says live there, but um, um, it's, she has a connection thing. Okay. Okay, and we're still live then. Okay, go ahead, Roland. <laughs> All right, I mean, I guess I, what I want to say, the thing about being online, we're still learning this thing, but it allows you to service your customers a lot faster. You know, it, it allows uh, interaction and transactions that occur much more smoother. And uh, you can be so many places at once without actually being there. Okay, we're back. So. There we go, we're back. I don't know what happened there, but anyway, uh, let's go ahead and just wrap this up quickly because I don't know what happened with my internet, but it's back. Um, okay. At the end of the day, what I what I wanted to, you know, leave people with, and hopefully you guys, you know, kept talking about, you know, kept just giving your story, um, is the difference being online why you chose to, to come online and how, you know, how you feel now that you're working online. Well, I, I was just gonna say, and I'll try to wrap this up quick. Yeah. Um, we're still getting the feel of being online, but the yeah. great thing about it is it allows us to service our customers a lot faster and more efficiently. And mm -hmm. another thing too, we can reach more people at one time. Mm. than what we were doing before. So, mm -hmm. you know, just that's just the way the world is going. Everybody's going online. And I just want to say, I know I feel more fulfilled. You know, just mm -hmm. like I felt fulfilled in the classroom working with the children over the years, but mm -hmm. I feel like I, I still have a lot to give and I want to help people. I want to help mm -hmm. families to, to, um, to eliminate the stress in their life and, and debt is a huge stressor in, in people's lives because we, we've been down that road. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there is a better way. Had I known then that there was a better way, and, and, and I feel a lot of teachers are trapped because working, I would hear people saying things like, you know, like, oh man, oh, I wish I, you know, if I had another job to go to, I'll go tomorrow, you know, because they're overwhelmed, you know, they're stressed. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're, you're evaluated based on the student's performance, right. not on your ability as a teacher, on the mm -hmm. student's performance. Some children can care less. And if the students perform poorly on a test, it's a teacher's fault. Right. You know, and well, there's just it's, a lot of pressure all yeah. the way around. Yeah. Now that you're online, things are much better. They're much better. Okay. We can enjoy okay. the outdoors, which is what I love. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Well, I want to go ahead and wrap this up. We can come back. You know, I'm going to have uh, different students come on uh, during the week, uh, pr probably on Fridays for those who are still here. 
again to all the replayers and the people who are here live. Thank you for staying around live. I'm sorry about for this uh, tech glitch we had this morning. But anyway, that is uh, that is the nature of live streaming. It is what it is as it is. So um, that's both the uh, it's a two sided uh, double edged sword, as they say. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for being on. Uh, we will hear a lot more from you. I know you have an ebook that you're working on now that's going to be coming out. And you also have a print book that is a children's book. I'm going to have you come on and talk more about that. Um, on another show. So that's exciting. Um, and you're learning how to market yourself. Yes. Right? And my whole thing, my whole, my reason for being, what I learned from being a breast cancer survivor is that my story was enough. And my story would actually financially support me for the rest of my life if I learned the skills and tools of being online if I learn those things and you all are learning those, you know, from me now. And um, I'm, I'm just proud of you, Reese, because a year ago, you didn't even know how to hardly turn your phone on to come on live. And now you go live every day. And look at Roland's here with you, with you, which is so awesome that you can be at home with your husband and you guys can generate an income based on where you have been as people who were in uh, the workforce for 30 some odd years have now retired and have started basically using your teaching, still teaching in an online space to a community of people that resonate with you. Yeah. Yes, that's for sure. That's for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, we will come back again. Thank you guys all who are watching. Thanks to everybody who shared. Thanks to the replay viewers for coming back and checking this out. And if you're a teacher, especially, I want you to check out Reese's show. She's on every morning, Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And she takes you out in nature and shares what she is experiencing and learning and um, her business, how it's developing as a retired teacher who is now online. So thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you for sharing your story. Believe me, your story is not only healing you, it's healing other people. Thank you. So thank you for sharing, Roland. And I'm so glad you're doing well. I'm so glad you're doing well. Your face, your eyes are bright. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Yes, one day at a time, one day at a time. All right, guys, we'll come back and we'll talk again. Peace. Thank you. Thank All right, bye now. Bye, everybody. Let's go. Bye-bye.